Danger Dolan. From a little session with the Hulk to swinging like Tarzan through Manhattan, we count the 15 best Marvel games. Number 15. Captain America and the Avengers. I like the Mega Drive or Genesis for you American guys, and this game is up there among my favorite games on the system. It's a side-scrolling beat-em-up where you can play as Captain America, Iron Man, Hawkeye, and the Vision. I tended to play Captain America just for the underwater shield spam, which just looked ridiculous, but in a way that was enjoyable. Whether or not this game holds up is in contention, but I would argue that it does if you like the barely alive genre or if you're a Marvel fan. Number 14. The Punisher. Brutal murder and torture is the Punisher's name in game. But don't worry, you can focus the over the top violence on killing bad guys for the most part. And the graphics aren't exactly real enough to make you feel a connection with the victims. Parents who are watching this should be advised that this game is completely kid friendly as the sadistic slaughter fest of this game contains no nudity and next to no sexual content. There's not much else to say about this game, except maybe that if you like the movie or comic books, it's a good fix for some punishing. Number 13. Spider-Man and Venom Maximum Carnage. Oh boy, were you in for some pixelated rock'em sock'em web shooting action in the form of a beat-em-up? This isn't the best beat-em-up, but it's probably the best Marvel game of the genre, thanks to fast-paced fluid action and tight controls. It has its downfalls in the form of some bugs, less than perfect animation and art, and the last boss felt like you had to exploit the game's mechanics more than a tool-assisted speedrunner playing Call of Duty Online. But it's great if you want to take down Carnage as Spidey or Venom. Number 12. Deadpool. Some people don't like the comedic Deadpool, and these people most definitely won't like this game because it's dripping fourth wall breaking humor of the ridiculous kind. Combat isn't the best, but I would classify it as serviceable. Nothing too special, but nothing inherently wrong either. The humor is also hit and miss. Some of the jokes made me cringe, and others made me almost fall out of my damn chair laughing. Either way, if you want to laugh, this game should have high priority on your backlog. Number 11. GTA 4 with the Iron Man 4 mod. Now if you're anything like me, you don't play GTA for the gritty realism. You play it to create wondrous mayhem of the cataclysmic variety. And this mod fulfills that role whilst also letting you play as Iron Man. While I'm nowhere near a fanatic of Iron Man, the first movie is one of my favorite action flicks, and after watching it I wanted to play a game based on the iconic hero, only to find out that all of the official ones were kinda lousy. This mod lets you fly around though, destroy cars, shoot laser beams and rockets like no tomorrow. The only issue is that, as far as I could tell, you couldn't just fall to the ground during flight. Number 10. LEGO Marvel Super Heroes. The LEGO games have a lot in common with one another. For one thing, they're all intended for kids, but designed well enough that it's feasible that an adult will enjoy playing it. Big part of the LEGO games is the humor. Instead of retelling the same story you already know, we're trying to make a new one that fits in with the old, they add some Pixar style humor that can entertain most people. Plus there are two big downsides, the grinding and the complete lack of difficulty. So play it with that in mind and try not to think too much in the process. This is a game made for when you want your brain to be in low power mode. Number 9. Captain America Super Soldier. A movie tie-in that doesn't suck? It appears that Marvel actually does okay with these on occasion. This game is like Prince of Persia meets Batman Arkham Asylum. The Prince of Persia elements come in from the level design and acrobatics. The Arkham Asylum comes in with the combat style. So if you like the sound of these two games meeting, you should definitely check it out. This game doesn't really deserve any awards, but it definitely deserves a play. Number 8. The Spider-Man PS1 Games Spidey has quite a few places on this list, and for good reason, as his games have quite a few diamonds in the rough that is licensed gaming. The PS1 games run smoothly and give you the web-swinging action that you both want and deserve. The second game upped the visual fidelity and added some new powers at the cost of Spider-Man looking like the 90s threw up on 50s science fiction. The real thing these games have going for them is their quantity. There's hours of fun to be had with them, and it's pretty consistently enjoyable for any Spider-Man fan. Number 7. X-Men Legends 2 Rise of Apocalypse X-Men is a fantastic franchise in the Marvel Universe, and this game does the universe justice in the form of 4-player co-op. You can pretty much play as every mutant that you'd want to. 
Not only is there co-op, there's also group combos where multiple players can combine their prowess against an enemy. This can give one of two impressions. Either you feel like a squad working together against the forces of evil, or you feel like some lowly scum taking out some random guy in an alley. If you don't have any friends to play with, the game still holds up, although it's not as fun. So you should probably get some friends. Number 6. X-Men Origins Wolverine. A God of War style game with a bit more depth, but a lot less scale. However, with that said, it's still a fun game that manages to be one of the few movie tie-ins that's substantially better than its source material. If you want to zip around, kill bosses, kill more bosses, slaughter enemies by pushing their head into the blade of running helicopters, you're in for a treat. If you don't like violence, then this game isn't for you. But come on now, we all know that video game violence is the best violence, right? Number 5. Marvel Heroes. So this is a Diablo-like, and Marvel Heroes stands up with some of the best of the online-only variety. Of course, since it's online-only, that means it comes with the inevitable problem of desync, where your client is telling you you're in one place, and the server says that not only are you dead, but you've been so for several years now, and everyone has moved on. Don't let that detract you, because the game doesn't have hardcore mode, and the economy is designed around that fact, so the experience isn't too heavily marred by this issue. Number 4. The Marvel vs Capcom series. Well, when I say series, I'm mainly talking about number 2 and 3, with my personal favourite being 2. This series is really a spin-off of the Street Fighter series, but most of them come with a fun single player campaign, which is rare for a fighting game. Some people prefer MVC3 because of the ultra spam, the flashy animations and relatively simple to pull off ultra moves make the game more flamboyant and flashy than a toucan's penis. Number 3. The Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction. Another movie tie-in that's better than the movie, with destruction and mayhem at levels that was unprecedented at the time. You can fling tanks into helicopters, punch a car into obliteration, not only that, but you are fast as all hell. It's not too often you get to be a powerhouse and speed star at the same time, but this game does it, and does it well. Anyone that likes action games should play this. Not only is it a great homage to the Hulk, but it's also a really good game with lots to do and destroy. Number 2. The Marvel Ultimate Alliance series. This action RPG features one of the biggest comic rosters out there, and it still manages to make each character feel unique and like you're actually playing as a character which is based on. The second game isn't anything new and could justifiably be called an expansion pack in terms of what it brings to the table, which is somewhat of a disappointment. But still, it's better story makes it well worth playing. Combined, the two games should make just about any Marvel fan happy. Except for maybe the hardcore purists that are so hard to please, it's pretty much worth ignoring their opinions anyway. Number 1. And for number 1, we have Spider-Man 2, in which you fling yourself around Manhattan at breakneck speeds. Easily the best example of how to handle grappling hook movement. Skill-based movement is incredibly appealing to me, and that's what this game is all about. You can aim your web slings individually, giving you a dynamic and engaging system of travel. If you're watching this you haven't played it, do yourself a favour and get your hands on the game, because it's one of the very best in the PS2's library. If you know anything about the PS2's library, you'd know this is pretty high praise. That's it for this countdown, and have a good one!